My name is Guillaume Belrose, uh, and I'm going to talk to you about the Scala language. Um, and the, the, the presentation is called The Scalable Language for Your Next Project. Um, I'm on Twitter, this is my Twitter handle if you want to spam me. Uh, you're welcome. Um, so, I'm a Scala software engineer. Um, I'm initially from a, a small island in the Caribbean called Martinique. Um, I now live in, uh, in Bryanstone in Johannesburg. Um, and I work remotely for a UK company called Quantel. You've probably never heard of Quantel before, but you've seen stuff which is put together using Quantel. Because we make uh, software and hardware for high end video editing. Um, so we put together software to help people make the news. So BBC, ESPN, um, CNN, Sky Fox. And we also put together software which allows people to edit movies. Um, so um, our kit has been used in many, many films like Avatar, uh, Lord of the Rings, um, Star Wars Episode 3. So it's a very cool company to work for. Um, back in Johannesburg, I also run the uh, Scala Johannesburg uh, user group meeting, where we meet um, once a month, get together, have some drinks, have some pizzas, and talk about our office guy. So it's um, the group so far is about 50 people, but it's it's quite going. Um, so in this talk, I'm going to talk, tell you a little bit about Scala, what it is. Uh, I'm going to show you some of the language features. There's no way I can talk about the whole thing uh, in half an hour. It's impossible. Um, I'm going to be covering some of the libraries and tools you can use, and um, if we have time, I will tell you what I use Scala for at work. Um, which is very interesting. Um, okay, so um, Scala is about 10 years old, and um, as a language, it belongs to the family of languages that can run on the JVM. So it's like Java itself, um, Clojure, uh, JRuby, Groovy, um, and essentially the Scala code compiles to bytecode code you can run in our JVM. Um, it is a uh, statically typed language, so everything, everything is compiled up front, so it's not a dynamic language. Uh, but even though it's not a dynamic language, it feels very dynamic because um, even though everything, everything has a type, you don't have to declare the type of um, everything because the compiler is very, very smart. Um, and the compiler is also very smart and it allows you to write uh, very little code to achieve quite a lot. Um, so let's get going. Um, so uh, why is it called Scala? Uh, that's a question. And uh, it's called Scala because it's a scalable language. And what it means is that um, you can use Scala for very simple things, like script-like script -like, uh, tasks. Um, you can use it to build uh, web applications. So, so one good example is uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is now using um, Scala and uh, what the Play framework, which is a web app framework, to build a lot of their web services and a lot of their um, web apps. Uh, so whenever you get spam from LinkedIn, it probably comes from a, uh, a Scala web app. Um, you can use also use Scala for doing things like analytics. So if you're into into your big data, as they call it, um, you can use something like um, Apache Spark. There are quite a few other projects. Basically, they 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 like um, Hadoop might produce, but uh, with some uh, synthetic sugar on top. So it's a lot easier to use. It's easier to read. Uh, it's more pleasure pleasure to work for. With um, and and you can go all the way to, to build a, a large scale distributed system. So the, the best example is is Twitter. Twitter started as a, a monolithic uh, Ruby on Rails app. I don't know how many years ago, and they, they eventually hit the point where they couldn't scale anymore. So they had to refactor the entire thing as a sort of service oriented architecture, and they came with an, an uh, they came up with an approach which is based on um, um, a sort of service abstraction, which is a Scala based um, abstraction that you can use from uh, you know, uh, Java, Clojure, and uh, Scala itself. Um, right. So another way of looking at it is um, Scala is scalable because you can start very small. So you can build a prototype, a few lines of code, you know, iterate very quickly, um, and then you can uh, build a product out of it. Um, and then once you've, um, once you've done a product, maybe you can turn it into a, into a system, pretty much like Clutter did. You can pretty much have a service, service-based approach where uh, you get your services talking to each other. So it's, it's also scalable in that way. Um, so I, I thought I'd start with a, like a Hello World type example, um, except this one is a bit more complicated. But what it does is an example that runs in the uh, Scala interpreter. So Scala has got an interpreter called the REPL that you also get in languages like Clojure, Ruby, 
uh, Python. Uh, and in the REPL, you basically type scanner code, which gets compiled and automatically run. So I've got four lines of code here. I hope you can see this. But what this basically does in four lines of code is it will check the weather for Johannesburg and print it out, print, print the highest temperature for today. And um, the way it works is you go basically one command to go to the uh, Yahoo web, web weather API, you fetch the RSS feed for the weather for today, and then you have uh, uh, some code here that basically navigate through the RSS, the XML, to extract the forecast for today and, and fetch the higher temperature for today. So it's very simple, and you, you, you basically copy and paste this, and it works straight away. So it's just to give you an idea for the sort of things you can do uh, when you prototype it's kind of, so it's it's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna uh, switch gear for a bit and talk about some of some of the features. So, so Scala is a object-oriented programming language, uh, as well as a functional programming language, and everything in in Scala is actually an object, including functions. Uh, and Scala has got a very straight to the point syntax for defining classes. Um, so here I define a class person with uh, a name and an age, and there's a method that says, um, that allows the person to introduce itself. Uh, so there's very minimal uh, ceremony here, uh, because you can see the, 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 the compiler works out the type of things for you, so you don't have to declare the type. So even though the greet method returns a string, you don't have to declare that. Um, and also, the, those attributes here are called, um, uh, they are parameters to the class constructor. And they are an annotated differently, so the name is annotated as a var, which means it's immutable, so it can't change. But the age, on the other hand, is a var, which means it can change. Uh, in other words, that means, you know, my name is not going to change, but my age is going to increment every year after my birthday. So, the way you create an object is basically say, you know, myself, new, equal, New, sorry, equal new, and you pass the attribute. Obviously, I'm not 21, but the compiler thinks it's okay to stay 21, so this, this compiler. Um, so, basically what I will say is the syntax for creating classes is very straight to the point, um, and, and the compiler also will also generate the, the access and methods for you, so the get and setters, you don't have to worry about that. So there's, uh, there's a lot of bullet print which goes away. Um, another type of class, is called a case class, which is a specific type of class, which is used for something called pattern matching, which I'll, which I'll be talking about later. Uh, and a case class is very useful for representing uh, sort of data and encapsulating it as an object. Uh, See so here, I define a case class person with a first name, a surname, and an age. By default, the case class is immutable, and um, uh, the compiler generates methods, which makes it easier for you to not modify the case class in place, but create a copy of it. So there's a, an example here, myself again, and you can say that my son is a copy of myself with the first name changed to his first name and the age changed to five. Um, other types of automatically generating methods are the equality, the hash string, and, and other ones. So this is very good for doing very lightweight modeling uh, because you can basically represent the data as, as an object. All right. Um, uh, Scala supports um, a thing called trait. So a trait is a collection of states and behavior put together. And Scala supports multiple inheritance uh, in, a, in a sort of deterministic way. Um, so here I can define a, a trait for things that can fly, uh, a trait for things that can swim, and you can define a, a, a pigeon as a bird, a, a bird which can fly, and a penguin is a bird that can swim. But obviously, you can reuse the swim, the swim trait for something else that can swim, like an Olymp Olympic swimmer, for instance. So traits are very good for composing behavior out of reusable building blocks. Um, and that's one of the ways you can make your code very short. All right. OK, so let's now talk about functions. So um, Scala is a functional programming language, so we support functions. And a function is something that takes um, input as fact a and return something of type B. Uh, in, in Scala, the functions are uh, first class citizens, so you can assign a function to a value, and you can also use a function as an input to uh, another method. Um, in Scala, functions themselves are objects, and you can compose functions, uh, assuming that the, the type signature is actually matching. 
Right, so let's, let's have a glance. Up all here, so I've got a very simple function that doubles an integer. So it takes an integer and returns twice that integer. Um, the, the type inference work, work, works well here as well because you, can, you don't have to clear the type of everything. And then what you can do is you can take that double function and you can compose it with itself to, to give you a quadruple function. Um, and the third example is, is an example of how you do, um, how you use a function as a parameter to a method. So in this case, I've got a process number method, which is very generic. And what you can do is you can plug in the functions to manipulate numbers. So if you know your design pattern, this is pretty much like a, like a strategy pattern, but except it takes one line of code. So it's pretty cool. Okay, so um, Scala has got very good collections. Collections are things like set, lists, uh, maps, array, and so on. Um, and what's nice about Scala is, three minutes, okay. What's nice about Scala is that uh, you get a very concise notation for uh, creating those, those collections. Uh, you get type inference again, so you don't have to declare things. And um, Scala gives you the choice of immutability and immutability. So immutability is very good if you do any, anything which is uh, multi-threaded um, or concurrent. Um, in some cases, mutability is good if you require performance, because if you can control what thread can access your data, then mutability is good. Uh, so here are some examples. Um, in South Africa, they like German cars, so we can have a set of German cars. Um, and, and underneath, I define a map of the world capitals. Um, so uh, the capital of South Africa is, is Pretoria. Um, what's nice about... Um, What's nice about the Scala collections is they are very functional. So they, the collections support a lot of methods which allow you to modify the data, like filter it, uh, slice it, map it, transform it, um, in, in many different ways. Um, so for example, if you've got numbers, you can go through each of the number and print them. Or uh, if you have your numbers, you can extract the numbers that are um, odd numbers or even numbers. And also here, if you get numbers, you can take basically the square of those numbers. Um, so if you, so using collections and the functional collections is one of the major ways of reducing the amount of crap in your code. Um, so I used to work with um, a guy from SAP and he says SAP is basically the world's biggest copy machine. So what, what SAP does is take, make, take the data structure from one place for a database, apply some transformation, some more transformation, some more transformation, and then it goes prints the stuff on the web page. But um, so all of this you can do with collections and functions very, very easily. You don't have to write a for loop anymore or iterate imperatively, just apply functions. So that's pretty, that's pretty useful. Okay, um, so pattern matching is another thing, which is a, essentially a switch statement on steroids, where you basically, you got a input value and you can um, see if that input value matches a, a sort of primitive type or if that input value is of a known type or if the input value conforms to an arbitrary nested structure. Um, so here is an example. I'm trying to match an argument, which could be anything. So if the argument is 1, I return a string 1. If the argument is a, is a type int, I return this is an int. And then this is how you can do, um, you can match that the argument complies to a structure. So if uh, the argument is a person whose first name we don't care, the surname is Obama, and age is 52, then we know we're talking about Barack Obama. Uh, and likewise, if you have uh, a person, what then you can do with pattern matching is you can extract uh, the variables from, from what you've matched. So it's, it is really powerful, um, and you can use those techniques with uh, functional programming languages like Clojure, I think. All right, uh, now let's talk a bit about some of the, the tools and libraries that you can use. Um, so TypeSafe is a company that was founded by the, uh, the, the inventor of Scala. And uh, it's a company pushing for the development of the language as well as the tools. So they provide you with uh, the a build tool called SBT. Um, you get um, uh, a Scala ID, which is an Eclipse plugin for Scala. Uh, then you have the, the Playware framework, which is very similar to Ruby on Rails with the difference is that uh, in the play framework, everything is, is type checked. So your code is type checked, your controllers are type checked, even your HTML templates are type checked, and the way you uh, map your URLs to your controllers is also type checked. So if you want, if you want to build any, any sort of complex web app, then it's, it's, a, it's a good way to go. Um, and the last bit is uh, ACA, which I'm going to talk about in, in a minute. OK, 
Okay, so uh, so ACA is definitely on the right hand side of the complexity spectrum of of Scala. So we started with a very simple example. Now this is going towards towards the end. Um, so ACA is a a toolkit for distributed computing. Is that okay if I carry on and? Okay, well, I carry anyway. Uh, <laughs> okay, so. Well, yeah, they're telling me to cut you off. Well, but I, yeah, but I override that, yeah? I override it. <laughs> People can ask questions or go for coffee or something. It's 10.30, okay? Um, so, um, yeah, so it's a toolkit for building concurrent and distributed computing, sorry, distributed application. And uh, ACA is based on the ACO actor model of concurrency. Um, so in the actor model, you have a, the actor is a unit of behavior that uh, you can only interact with an actor by sending messages. So, so you, you, you send a message, the actor receives a message, does something, and potentially sends a message back to you. But um, if you think about it, it's a, it's, an act, it's a model where the state is very isolated. So it's very good for concurrency because there is no, there's no shared state uh, to worry about. And ACA has got very nice properties, has got built-in fault tolerance, and it can scale up, uh, which means it's very efficient at using all the calls in your machine, and you can also scale out by running uh, processes on different hosts. And it, 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 it takes care of the communication between the hosts. Um, so here is a dummy actor. Is it? Well, I carry on there. Come on. Come on, please. Why not? There's another speaker up here. No, it's a, well, how, what, when, is, when is the last speaker? When is the next speaker? 10.30? Uh, no, 10.20 till 10.40. Who's next? It's starting now. Who's next? One, Jared. No, yeah, Jared. I was coffee. <laughs> anyway, all right, this is what I finished now, okay, and, and I can stop. So this is what an actor looks like, and an actor has got a message, which is invoked every time it receives a message. So if you have questions, come fetch me. Because there's no there's no enough time. Okay. All right. Thank you.